Now, so much is going on in Ebony State, especially the developmental strides of the sitting governor, David Umahi. Top on his ad administration's agenda is creating jobs for the teeming youth population in the state, as well as emphasizing the investment opportunities that abound in the state. The state is also at this time dealing with insecurity concerns that could, if not addressed, affect the economy of the state. Joining me to talk about political developments in Ebony State is Commissioner for Information, Ebony State, Uchenna Oji. Good morning, and thanks for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Thank you very much. All right, let's begin on this uh, cheering note for the state. Uh, recently, a civic organization, Budget Nigeria, uh, in its uh, fiscal performance ranking of states across the country, uh, ranked uh, Ebony as the sixth. Talk to us, uh, what is the state doing differently to have been able to achieve that position and uh, how the level of development that has made uh, that kind of organization believe that uh, Ebony uh, owns that spot number six? Yeah, thank you. Actually, there are levels of uh, performance uh, uh, indicators uh, raised by that very organization. Um, but I must say that um, one of them is a uh, performance in the area of uh, capital project execution. And the state was said to be the first. Mm. In the area of um, um, issue of um, um, budgeting, budgeting or with transparency and showing accountability in the budgeting process, Ebony State is one of the fourth you know, best uh, states in the whole federation. And in all, Ebony came second in all the whole of the indices raised. But this is not the only time that Ebony has done that. Uh, World Bank in 2018 had a, a, a performance index in the area of health that is uh, maternal mortality ratio, and Ebony was said to be one of the best. Of course, in the area of education, NUC made, had its index too, uh, in terms of the local government with the highest number of people that uh, you know, gained admission. That was in 2017, and Ebony came first. A local government in Ebony State came first. Mm. And when they made uh, an assessment about the best medical student, a medicine and surgery that took jam, Ebony State came first. A mm. student from Ebony, who was good in Ebony. So we have garnered a lot of laurel, or a lot of laurels under our dear governor in terms of performance. And that is because the governor is a man of prudence who works with, with passion, who serves selflessly to ensure that uh, his people are li really brought out of uh, poverty. And that can be seen in the various uh, capital uh, projects that the governor has executed. As I speak with you, apart from Lagos and Abuja, but he still has the highest number of uh, road network done in concrete pavement. Of course, it's a novel. Really? That, yeah, it's a novel. No any other state has done that. Doing road construction with concrete pavement. I think is uh, Dan Gote that is doing that in Apapa, and you can see the difference. And I must say that today, but it's a global village. And what the governor is looking at is inf getting investors to come to Ebony State. And that is by ensuring the, um, the presence of critical infrastructure in Ebony State. Today we have uh, um, about 13 to 14 number of flyovers, beautifully adorned flyovers. Outside Lagos and Abuja boys is uh, the, the highest next to Lagos and Abuja. Mm -hmm. I can just imagine a bunch of yesterday that was created uh, in 1996. Of course, it was very poor, it was never found anywhere in the map of developing states up, till, uh, up until uh, 2015 when the governor came on board. So we have got a lot of things that are speaking for us. We have mm -hmm. Africa's biggest shopping mall. And the governor did conceptualize, constructed, it's been completed, and people are being uh, uh, made to have uh, shops in that very shopping mall. We have an emerging uh, um, airport that is uh, ongoing, right. and that airport is going to be uh, having a competitive value with Lagos uh, National Airport and Abuja National Airport. The idea of the governor is that through all of this critical infrastructure, job can be created. Of course, investment and and, will and be that is where I'm to, going because uh, the next state. question for me is all of all, all of these indicators. How is that improving the lives of the citizens of the state, especially in terms of job creation and empowering them as well? Yeah, the governor is looking at getting to uh, bring about those critical infrastructure that will trigger on his own job creation. And that is why we are looking at uh, having uh, not less than um, 10,000 number of jobs that will be provided by the creation of uh, uh, Africa's uh, 
most beautiful university of medical sciences that the governor did conceptualize. And uh, the governor's idea is that he is going to hand it over to the private sector to drive. But we, we are looking at uh, exploiting other opportunities in job creation, you know, both uh, skilled, non-skilled, and semi-skilled. And I can say that today uh, we are uh, trying to get to the uh, Catholic Bishops' Conference to, to, to drive my own and drive the management mm -hmm. of that University of uh, Medical Sciences, which is going to be a center of excellence for the treatment of heart disease. Uh, liver problems, heart, I mean, uh, um, blood problems, including uh, a cancer. And of course, uh, it's going to be also a center of excellence for the, for the uh, production of dialyzers. Of course, no, any, other, any other country in Africa has a center for the production of dialyzers. But if we're able to do that, we're going to be the number one, which will soon come. So all of these facilities will trigger job creation naturally. We are looking at getting private sector to really enhance the industrialization principle or policy that we have. What are we uh, talking about? That government as, as, as an institution cannot, you know, you know, carry out industrialization. Right. But you have to provide the enabling environment, the necessary critical infrastructure that will now attract investors that will come and industrialize the state. Today we are having and you that are detail. saying the government has been able to provide that enabling environment Fantastic. because we still see some persons who are still complaining about issues bordering around enabling the environment for their businesses to thrive. And there are some persons who will, still, who will debate all of this that you are saying that uh, they still do not have jobs. We still see a lot of persons at, uh, who are hawkers, who are still struggling to make ends meet for themselves. How do you reconcile all of this that you have said alongside these people who still have complaints? Yeah, complaint is all we get in a society like this. Uh, of course, you know where we are coming from, uh, just six years of governor's emergence. And uh, we are seeing a lot of transformation. But the governor, in addition to creating environment, has done a lot to empower our people. Uh, I think when I was commissioner for human capital development, we came to Lagos. Uh, I shortlisted 520 number three hawkers you know, on the quality of local government, 40 per local government, gave them training in different entrepreneurship programs and empowered them. And we introduced what is called a street to skill empowerment program, got them out from the street of Lagos, empowered them with 130 million naira grant. We went down, of course, to, to, to those within the shores of the state, empowered them with 750 million uh, naira grant. And that is after turning them. Of course, uh, the widows, we call them the poorest of the poor widows, they were given a grant of 400 uh, million, 300,000 to go into petty trading. That has, of course, enhanced school uh, enrollment and all of that. So we are doing a lot, apart from creating environment, attracting investors. Today we have an uh, Ibeto uh, cement industry that is doing a lot of things to ensure that they, they start in earnest to empower our people to go into productions that will make for job creation in our place. We have a pharmaceutical company that is coming to invest no less than five million US dollars in right. the state mm. to develop a pharmaceutical uh, you know, firm in a bony state that will also create job. Have what is called industrial cluster, where the government of a boy state, through our governor, had to create to ensure that um, our, our entrepreneurs, our youths and women, get right. something to do, get an opportunity to really fend for themselves, to be self-reliant, to be self-sufficient. All right. Uh, because of want of time, I want us to make uh, judicious use of all of these uh, issues. We must uh, address them. Because one other issue that seem or that might pose a threat uh, to all of these uh, developments and indicators that a boy seem to have achieved so far is the aspect of insecurity. We have seen uh, several communal clashes in the state. Uh, we've seen a displacement. Some persons have had to move to other states uh, for, for want of finding a place to stay. We have seen uh, clashes you know, and all the other issues, unknown gunmen activities within the state. How is the state addressing this matters because where the people where there is no peace the people cannot benefit all of, from all of this development that you are pointing out yeah the governor has shown a lot of ingenuity in addressing all of those issues of insecurity about the state is part of southeast being plagued currently by issues of agitations that have turned violent 
Uh, of course, Kobunu clash is uh, expectedly uh, being an agrarian state uh, started at a point in time. But the governor has nipped all of these issues in the board by, you know, having a direct consultation with stakeholders, with youth and women. And he thinks that engagement is all there is for us to sort out some of these insecurity concerns that we are having in parts of Southeast and Nigeria. And what does he do every time he does engage directly with the traditional rulers, the religious leaders, using women, youth leaders, and all of that to tell them, look at the need for us to have peace. And having seen the sincerity of purpose of the governor, the passion and ingenuity in rebuilding a bony state, uh, people are appreciating the need to live in peace. That's why I speak with you. There's no issue of communal clash anywhere as in a speak? As I speak with you, that's none. It's been all sorted out. What we have is this issue of agitation that has really made people to have a level of fear, which we are going by way of sensitization orientation to see how we can talk to especially the actors, the actors to see how they can lay their arms and let us embrace peace. What and agitations are you talking yes, about? Yes, there of course I pop agitations. Yeah, from time to time you hear issue of a seat at home and all of that. Mm. But the gov governor is engaging all the persons concerned and we think that militarization is not the issue. The issue is how to engage them, how to talk to the collective sensibilities of our people to know that we are undoing ourselves when we begin to say, don't go out to fend for yourself. Eventually we're going to be the losers, we're going to be casualties of this economic situation that we will find ourselves. All right. Uh, the issue of uh, a seat at home, uh, recently the governor was saying that it is uh, turning uh, the Eboi uh, state uh, use uh, in terms of the men and women to uh, house boys and girls, something, to, to, something like that. And uh, it also came out to say that there is no seat at home. But uh, we saw uh, just uh, yesterday or so that uh, the people, shops were closed. A lot of persons observed the sit at home. Yeah, you don't need to call it uh, compliance or observance of sit at home. It's just mere fear because nobody is a friend of the How is of it girls. that the government is not able to allay their fears? Yeah, that is uh, still in process, the process of sensitization and engagement processes that I did mention. Apart from this issue of agitation that has turned violent, which we must handle uh, very, very, very um, 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 seriously and in a very gentle way, uh, the issue of banditry, we have sorted that out by virtue of the creation of necessary facilities. We have a viewing center in a Bonny state, whereby in a particular center you can view all the major junctions within the metropolis, the such like towns, about three to four such like towns, and each of the headquarters of the local government areas, we can view what is happening so there's no criminality. But these are brothers and sisters who are going into agitation. We need to engage them. Why is the government not engaging them as quickly as possible, knowing how it is affecting the businesses, the livelihoods of a lot of the citizens? Yeah, that is what uh, we are doing. Uh, their governor has not been resting as chairman of Southeast Governors Forum, has been engaging his brother governors to, to see how we can talk to the people all over the uh, South is this not just a Bonny State issue at all? Even if you get everybody in a Bonny State to keep quiet, others from other parts of the state will run into a Bonny State and parts of this of, of, of this zone. And so it is going to be a collective thing, and it's a gradual process. And I think that um, um, everybody is listening and is hearing that um, even the government, uh, they're not going to be the casualties only. Uh, all are casualties of, of, of all of this crisis. Mm. And so it's going to be a collective thing. And uh, this is also a platform to talk to our people, to talk to the generality of the people of Nigeria. Our um, banditry is not only in the south, it's also in parts of uh, even the north and the west and everywhere. Absolutely. So we need to really address that squarely through engagement processes. Now, uh, one of the reasons uh, the region came up with uh, the security outfit at Bubago was to address some of the security concerns uh, within that region. Talk to us how effective they have been. Yeah, I, I will speak for Ebony State where I am representing as Commissioner for Information. Mm. Uh, the governor did not only uh, steer the, the constitution of that Bubago as a security outfit, 
The governor also came down home to his home state and ensured the recruitment of no less than 4,000 number of Babagu security uh, officials and they got training from the conventional security and of course giving necessary gadget. But then the area they have specialization is the area of intelligence gathering and cooperation and collaboration with the conventional security. And that has been a lot of success garnered uh, as a result of the creation of a Babagu in a Bunji state. I can tell you that no criminal goes scot free. If you commit any crime anywhere, you attack. That's why I have not heard any issue of kidnapping, armed robbery, except all of these agitations that we are gradually right. handling. Quickly, before we let you go, which uh, the some days ago, uh, that was Wednesday, uh, it was one year anniversary for the NSAS uh, uh, protest. It was the anniversary. And sometime in September, Justice Aloy Wanko said that uh, about 189 million should be awarded to uh, some persons who, uh, as compensation to those who came out to complain about uh, police brutality and were victims of uh, extrajudicial killings. Where are we with that? Quickly? Yeah, the uh, recommendations we are taking in the State Executive Council mm -hmm. and the uh, uh, Council had to really uh, consult for the ESCO committee to go through all the issues and make final uh, recommendations. But I want to say that uh, we, we are very much satisfied right. with the outcome of that uh, uh, judicial panel of inquiry and of course the committee, the Obosman committee. Have the victims been compensated? Yes, uh, recommendations we have made, one for the compensations of the victims. Uh, compensation of the victims of answers and also those that we are uh, unlawfully incarcerated in prison facilities right. which have been prosecuted they are also meant to be compensated but by the time the ESCO committee comes out uh, with final uh, report on that the ESCO and the uh, state government will deal all right we'll leave the conversation here now thank you uh commissioner for information ebony state uchena orji for your time thank you very much